for Natural England and they have seconded me to Thames Water um, to help them get uh, a project off the ground called Smarter Water Catchments where they wanted to engage the farmers in the even load catchment you could say cynically to um, help improve their image um, but on the other hand they they do have a sincere desire to improve the um, catchment and the and the water environment um, so I started doing this I think it was in 2015 catchment sensitive farming had already been operating in this catchment for quite a few years and I was wondering how on earth I was going to engage farmers um, when they'd already had access to money and, and uh, various options already. Um, and the approach I took is I worked with Atkins, the environmental um, engineering group, and we did a very um, detailed study of the even low catchment. Um, I have excellent technological backup from hydrologists and catchment scientists and everything else, which is really, really important to have that information at your fingertips so that you can target effectively. But anyone can do that. You've then got to be able to go out and engage the farmers. And how do you do that? Um, it's basically, I use uh, a, a very old fashioned technique. I cold call and I turn up the drive. I don't bother to write any letters. I don't bother to do any of that because if you're farming, it goes in the bin. You're too busy. You can't, you don't want to read anything. Um, and so we start in 2016 and we've had the most fantastic uptake of the work that we've chosen to do. That's because I visit, I get to know every single farmer. I will visit him three or four times before I even start to tell him, you know, what's on offer. And actually, rather than telling him what's on offer, I ask them what their problems are. Where's your Achilles heel? Where's your problem? You know, you've got them. You just don't like to admit it. And often they're quite relieved because it's not the EA, it's not RPA, it's someone who's actually got quite a lot of money up their sleeve for them and they can spend it on something on their farm, which I then insures in a targeted area and is actually going to achieve what we want to achieve, which is better water quality and not like happens, which is just a lot of concrete or a new drive, um, which, you know, that's why you need the targeting and that's why you need people on the ground um, and we've also set up something called a no-till trial where we've got farmers working with cover crops and not plowing which might not fit into Richard's um, Richard's um, organic thing but anyway um, but to go to the question that um, Tim asked me it's how can the charity sector best deliver on the needs and demands of partnerships and that is one, having good technological backup for your catchment sensitive farming officer, having a catchment sensitive farmer who really is passionate about farming and understands farming, and people. Because you've got to have the skin of a rhinoceros and the sensitivity of a mouse. Because you've got to know exactly what you're walking into when you go in onto that farm. You've got to not care if you get sworn at. You've got to have a hard to hear his problem three or four times and so he gets worn out telling you. And then you need to be sensitive to the fact that he's been treated for cancer and his wife's not very well and his kids run away from home and or whatever it might be. But you just get very involved in the farm. And then uh, the most interesting thing about this project has been the actual delivery. And this is the thing that I found with the charity Sexter. And I think it's we've got to be really, really careful because you've got a lot of people who have got really good intentions and they've got a lot of money to spend and they want it to be spent in the right way. Well, we've covered the technical targeting, we've covered the right person to deliver it. But where these organisations really, really fall down, and it's embarrassing, especially when you're on the person that's having to go up that farm drive, is that they just do not get the contracting and the payment system up and running properly. And, and, and the whole thing can be just after a lot of hard work can just fall flat on its face because those two things are not organised. And I think I really think one of the best things would be if there were people who wanted to get together, who wanted to donate money to charities or to the environmental sector or to a catchment partnership or whatever, is it one of the first things you do is that you get someone who can administer, run the contracts, run the payments so everyone gets paid and paid on time the right amount of money. 
because a number of times I've seen that go horribly wrong and then damage the whole reputation of a project. So that would be my contribution. Thank you, sir.